So today we are looking at differential reinforcement procedures. Differential reinforcement procedures are complicated. They are difficult for new RBTs, they're difficult for current RBTs, and they're difficult for some BCBAs, to be honest with you, okay? They don't have to be though, right? So it just starts with differential reinforcement. What is differential reinforcement? That's when you're reinforcing a target behavior and putting other behaviors on extinction, okay? It's a fundamental way we teach an ABA. We reinforce what we want, okay? While we put other behaviors on extinction. Differential reinforcement leads to differentiation. Differential reinforcement leads to discrimination, okay? Very important that you understand what differential reinforcement is, how to implement it, because you're going to be doing it all the time, all right? So when we talk about procedures, differential reinforcement procedures, okay, we're just talking about our guidelines of how we implement differential reinforcement, okay? And the three we're going to talk about is DRO or DRO, DRI, and DRA, okay? Some of these teach replacement behaviors, okay, but one doesn't. DRI and DRA teach replacements, DRO does not, okay? And that's important to remember because that's gonna help you remember what the difference between DRO is and DRI and DRA, okay? So I'm gonna go into detail of each one, okay? But let's do a question first. Which of the following examples best represents differential reinforcement of other behaviors? So DRO, what are we looking for with DRO? <clears throat> DRO, we're looking for a behavior not happening. And that's where it gets confusing, okay? Because typically we want to reinforce the behavior for happening, right? We want to increase it. However, with DRO, we're looking at behaviors that are high intensity, high frequency, okay, dangerous. And we really want to work to decrease them as quick as possible to the point that we're willing to deliver reinforcement just for them not occurring. So we're looking for in this question, what is an example of us reinforcing in the absence of a behavior? A, Tiffany reinforces her client when they touch green in the presence of green, but not blue. When does Tiffany deliver reinforcement? When her client touches green. So she's reinforcing a response, a particular specific target behavior, okay? So A cannot be DRO. B, Jim reinforces her client when they are not screaming. Bingo, right? What is the key here? Jim reinforces when not screaming. So in the absence of screaming, Reinforcement is being delivered. And that is textbook differential reinforcement of other behaviors, DRO, reinforcing in the absence of a behavior. Okay, so B looks great. Remember, always read all your answer choices just to be sure. C, Bobby reinforces his client for having her seatbelt on and not when it's off. So is Bobby reinforcing for a behavior? Yes, client having seatbelt on is reinforced, not when it's off. Can these two behaviors happen at the same time? No, you can't have it off and on. So this would be DRI. C is out. And then D, Jamie reinforces a client when they raise their hand 10 times in class, then, then eight, then six. So is Jamie reinforcing for a behavior? Yes, right? So be careful here, okay? Because it is decreasing, but the client is still engaged in the behavior and re receiving reinforcement, okay? So we're just trying to lower right? How many times they're raising their hand. Whatever. However, it is not DRO, okay? DRO is reinforcing when not happening, okay? In the absence of a behavior. Okay, so DRO, differential reinforcement of other behaviors. Remember, differential reinforcement sometimes teaches replacement behaviors. DRO does not. So what are we doing? We're reinforcing when a behavior is not happening. What does that mean? We're reinforcing anything else happening as long as the target behavior isn't, okay? This can be an issue because you can reinforce maladaptive or problematic behaviors if not careful. Because in my example, Billy's not biting himself, okay? He receives a Skittle. Billy could be doing a hundred other things, okay? But if he's not biting himself, I'm still giving him a Skittle. And I can be reinforcing one of those other hundred things unknowingly. So we need to be careful, okay, when doing DRO Okay, because we're not teaching a replacement behavior. We're just trying to get a behavior to stop. Okay, in the absence of a behavior, the client is receiving reinforcement. Okay, so question, which of the following represents an ethical concern regarding differential reinforcement of other behaviors? So what do we need to consider when implementing DRO? Okay, what ethical concern do we need to consider? Does our BCBA need to consider before we implement any DRO procedure? 
A, behavior may get worse before it gets better. Um, I mean, yes, kind of, right? But it's not the best answer, okay? Because we're, we're, we're reinforcing in the absence of a behavior, okay? So um, usually with DRO, we're looking at very high frequency behaviors, uh, behaviors that are already intense, dangerous behaviors. So typically behaviors that are already pretty bad, right? Pretty, they're high intensity enough where we just need to reinforce anything else. Okay, We just need to decrease it in any way possible. So DRO, our concern is not really about it getting worse before it gets better. Okay, We're just trying to find any opportunity where that behavior isn't occurring. B, you may inadvertently reinforce behavior you don't want to reinforce. Yes, exactly. You can accidentally reinforce maladaptive or problematic behaviors if not careful. Okay, So you may inadvertently reinforce behavior you don't want to reinforce. Remember our example. If we're reinforcing Billy for not biting, think about what are we reinforcing? What is Billy doing when he's not biting himself? It could be a million things, right? So you could reinforce a million different things. So when you're doing DRO, you and your BCBA need to be cautious, okay, and conscious and aware, okay, of this phenomenon. And you need to plan for it, okay? Because you want to reinforce when it's not happening because it's DRO, but you want to be careful as well, right? You don't want to go overboard and start reinforcing other maladaptive behaviors constantly, okay? So ethically, this is a concern. See, it is a punishment procedure. It is not. It is differential reinforcement, so it's reinforcement and extinction. Okay. D, it focuses on the absence of behavior. Yes, it does. DRO does focus on the absence of behavior. However, that is not the ethical concern. That is just how the procedure works. So that's DRO. Okay. Let's move on to DRI. Now, some differential reinforcement procedures teach replacement behaviors. DRI teaches a replacement behavior, okay? Differential reinforcement of incompatible behavior. You're reinforcing a behavior that is incompatible with the other behavior, okay? You're teaching a replacement behavior, let's just say replacement, okay? The replacement behavior must be incompatible with the behavior it is replacing. What if the replacement behavior is compatible with the behavior, then it's DRA. And that's the difference between DRI and DRA, okay? That's the only difference. Both of them teach replacement behaviors, Except in DRI, you're teaching an incompatible behavior with, with the maladaptive behavior or the behavior you're trying to change. In DRA, the behavior can happen at the same time, okay? And that's the key difference. That's what you're looking for when you're doing DRI and DRA questions. Can my replacement behavior occur at the same time as the behavior that I'm replacing? If the answer is yes, it's DRA. If the answer is no, it's DRI, okay? Reinforce the replacement but not, okay, the other behavior and on extinction, okay? Which of the following represents differential reinforcement of incompatible behaviors? So we're looking for the example of DRI here, okay? And remember, what do we say we're looking for in DRI? We're looking for us reinforcing a behavior, okay, that's incompatible with the behavior on extinction. So hey, Jimmy gets up from his seat every three minutes to get the teacher's attention. The teacher only gives Jimmy attention when he raises his hand. So the, what's being reinforced? Jimmy raising his hand. What is being replaced? Jimmy getting up from his seat. Can Jimmy raise his hand and get up from his seat? Yes. So this is not DRI. This is DRA. And that's how you should go through each question. Okay. Molly hits mom to request access to the iPad. Mom gives Molly the iPad only when she says iPad, please. What are we reinforcing? Molly's saying iPad, please. What are we replacing? Hitting mom. Can they happen at the same time? Yes. DRA. Simple as that. C. Tiffany hits her brother during car rides. Mom plays her favorite song when she keeps her hands on her lap, but stops the song when she hits her brother. What is being reinforced? Keeping hands on her lap. What is not? Hits her brother. Can she keep hands on her lap and hit brother at the same time? No. Okay. This is pretty good. They're looking incompatible, right? So, so far, C is our best answer. And then D, Ben receives a token every five minutes. He doesn't say a bad word. What does that tip you off as? What are we reinforcing? A behavior not occurring. Therefore, what is that? DRO, okay? So, if you don't understand this question, go through it three or four times because it's a great, 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 great way, okay, to check your knowledge of the three different types of differential reinforcement, okay? Because all three are featured, right? And it's similar to what you might see on the exam. So if you don't understand this, okay, go back through it a few times until you do. 
Now, differential reinforcement is challenging. So if you don't immediately get it, I would move on to other things, learn other stuff first, easier stuff, and come back to it, okay? Don't stress yourself out over learning differential reinforcement if it's not clicking for you, okay? Okay, finally, DRA. Again, some differential reinforcement procedures teach replacement behaviors. DRA does. DRA teaches re uh, replacement behaviors, okay? Our replacement behavior can be compatible with the behavior we're replacing, so it can happen at the same time, okay? So we've got to be smart about our reinforcement with DRA, okay? Because those two behaviors can happen simultaneously, but we need to be sure we're labeling and targeting the replacement. So, Behaviors can occur simultaneously. Reinforce only the target replacement behavior. It's great for teaching functional communication. All right. Again, what is the key difference between DRI and DRA? The key difference is with DRI, our replacement behavior cannot happen at the same time. With DRA, it can. And what about DRO? We're reinforcing in the absence of a behavior. Okay. So go through each slide, all right, again, and really hammer hammer it home in your mind, okay, the difference between these three, because you will get questions about this on the exam, and you want to be able to nail them, okay? So question, which of the following does not represent differential reinforcement of alternative behaviors? Ooh, so different kind of question. We're looking for the one that does not represent DRA. So three are going to be DRA, one isn't, all right? Read the questions carefully and figure out what they're asking you. Hey, Joe will call Jenny early in the morning. So Jenny only answers Joe's calls when he calls after 9 a.m. Hmm, this is interesting, okay? Jenny only delivers reinforcement for what? Calls after 9 a.m.? If a call comes earlier, no reinforcement. Can calls come earlier and at 9 a.m. at the same time, okay? No, those two calls cannot occur simultaneously, right? That's close, right? But this looks like DRI, okay? Let's keep reading. John will shout out answers in class. The teacher only calls on John when his hand is raised. What's reinforced, hand raised, what's not, shout out. Can you raise your hand and shout out at the same time? Yes, that's DRA, DRA, okay? So B is out. Bill will climb on the counter to get a cookie. Mom only gives Bill a cookie when he asks for a cookie. What's being reinforced, asking for a cookie. What's not, climbing on the counter. Can you ask and climb on the counter at the same time? Yes, that is DRA. Ginny will run into her RBT when she wants a hug. The RBT only gives Ginny a hug when she signs the word hug. What's reinforced? Signing the word hug. What's not? Running into RBT. Can you sign and run into RBT at the same time? Yes, DRA. That leaves us with A, our best answer, okay? Does not represent differential reinforcement of alternative behaviors. A 5 a.m. call cannot occur at the same time as a 9 a.m. call. All right, that's differential reinforcement. Don't freak out if you don't understand that clearly the first time through, okay? It's one of the harder ones. I think it's only, maybe the only more difficult uh, would be the one we did last week, which is antecedent interventions, motivating operations. Differential reinforcement is just challenging, okay? So don't stress out about it. I would learn everything else first, unless it's just clicking. If not, come back to it, okay? All right, that wraps it up for this week. I hope you have a great Memorial Day holiday, okay? As always, if you need our study materials, okay, um, look for, uh, you can find them, okay, on uh, our website or from one of these links, which I'll put in the comments and description below, okay. As always, comments and questions, um, please leave and I will help, uh, help you as much as I can. As always, study hard and I will see you soon.